scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I'm very, very touched by our hunger. So many people outside. I'm seeing several people, you know, hungry and with their hearts opened. I want you to please help me appreciate the bishop and his dear wife. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you sincerely. Appreciate this opportunity. And I must honor a very great man of God, great prophet of God, Pastor Emos Fenwa. Please let's give him a big, big God bless you. Hallelujah. I sincerely honor and appreciate all the men, women of God standing here and then every other person in ministry may the lord bless you in jesus name our time is fast spent let's see how far god will help us tonight can you lift your hands to heaven and let's ask the lord for an encounter go ahead and ask him to give you a definite destiny defining encounter someone praying outside make sure you are praying lift your hands to heaven and ask the Lord to give you an encounter the encounter that turns Saul to Paul the encounter that turns Cephas to Peter for in Jesus matchless name we have prayed for in Jesus matchless name we have prayed Amen. father we pray that you speak to our hearts we pray that you will grant us understanding even by your word bless our hearts impart upon our lives open up our minds and our spirits tonight and Lord I pray that everyone who is here represented and the many who are following online let none of us return back disappointed for in jesus matchless name we have prayed god bless you please be seated <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the lord can you hear me am i loud enough hallelujah let me plead with my sound people to help me so that we're clear enough we gather like this for many reasons and I'll give you only three of them then we'll begin to teach every time God brings us together we must understand that there is something at the back of his mind God has an intent for every activity hallelujah um, he does not call the seed of Jacob the Bible says to seek him in vain and I'll give you three of the many reasons or the many intents behind every prophetic gathering like this number one every time God brings us together it is an opportunity to have an upgrade in our spiritual understanding hallelujah as you'll be learning tonight it matters that you grow it matters that you ascend by light 
Galatians chapter 2 and verse 2 says, I went up by revelation. I went up by revelation. Takes more than desire to go up. And I went up. I ascended heights and realms by revelation. Hallelujah. So when God brings us together, it's an opportunity for transformation by the word of God. By the way, let me tell you that God's method has always been and still remains his word. His method to lift is his word. His method to bless is his word. His method to lift men, to open up doors. Everything happens at the instance of his word. John chapter 1 and verse 3 says, And without him was not anything made that was made. And without him, outside of the participation of the word, was not anything made that was made. Hallelujah. So when we gather, number one, it is for transformation, access to higher levels of light. The Bible says that he made two great lights, one to rule the day and the other to rule the night. That means there is no dominion for you except at the instance of light. Hallelujah. Number two, the second reason why we're gathered in a meeting like this is to experience the power of God. Paul said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech. He says that your faith will not rest upon the wisdom of men, but upon the power of God. It is important that the saints experience the power of God. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night in John chapter 3. When you read verse 2, he says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher sent from God, he says, for no man can do these miracles except God be with him. Except God be with him. There are certain things that attest to the fact that God is in a place. One of them is the power of God at work producing miracles, signs, and wonders. In Acts chapter 8, when you begin to read from verse 5, the Bible says Philip went down to Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. The next verse, the Bible says the people gave heed with one accord to the things that he spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. They did not just hear a message, they heard and they saw. The Christian faith was designed to be heard but then to be experienced. Are we together? Please, let me have your attention. So number one, that we're here for an upgrade in our spiritual understanding. Number two, to encounter the power of God. And number three, every time God gathers us together, it's an opportunity to impart upon us the various dimensions of graces required for the next level of our prophetic work. Because you see, in this kingdom, we only ascend to the degree to which we are imparted. The kind and the quality of grace upon your life is what defines your spiritual possibilities. Hallelujah. Two believers born of the same uh, life of God, but their results can differ in this kingdom. The difference between the result of one believer versus another is not the love of God. For the Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. Are we together? Yes. But it is the kind and the level of grace that is at work in their lives. Acts chapter 10 and 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. It's not just that he was anointed. The Bible tells us look at the extent to which God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Bible says he went about doing good, healing all they that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. In Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost again. When they were threatened, he said, Now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto your servants that with boldness they will declare, you know, and the signs and wonders will be wrought through the name of your Holy Son, they prayed and the room shook and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says they went and they preached with boldness. 
There are many reasons, but these are the three. I want this to be at the back of your mind so that you're not just listening to a man of God or men of God and then you share the grace and go back. I recap one last time that every time we gather, it is because there is a need for upgrade. Are we together now? Your spiritual understanding needs to be upgraded. Colossians chapter 1. Paul was praying over the church in Colossae and he made a desperate cry, a desperate plea unto God. Colossians 1 and verse 9. He says, I pray, give it to us please media, for this cause also since the day we heard it, he says, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Hallelujah. The light of God is very, very important. So, an upgrade in your spiritual understanding, an opportunity to experience the miracle working power of God. Hallelujah. Because you see, if God is Father, according to Scripture, the zenith of fatherhood, the real proof of fatherhood is not having children. The real proof of fatherhood is the extent to which you give. If ye being evil, he says, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? That means as wicked as you people are, I was speaking to them now, you still have a sense of compassion because you are fathers. How much more your heavenly father that he would give that which we are. So if it is true that God is father, there must be a platform for him to reach out to people, bringing healings, bringing deliverances. Hallelujah. And then, of course, finally, to be imparted. It's very important. When God sends a word to Jacob, he intends that that word be lighted upon Israel. Nothing God gives a man should remain with that man forever. It is supposed to be a distribution point to as many who are hungry, desirous, and discerning. Has someone learned something already? So I'm teaching tonight, let's begin our session, Empowered by Light. Empowered by Light. Empowered by Light. First Timothy chapter 2, I begin my reading from verse 1 to 4. I hope you love scripture. First Timothy 2, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. We're reading to 4, verse 2. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Verse 3. It says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Let's read verse 4 together. Ready? One to read. Who will have all men to be saved uh -huh, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Apostle Paul is teaching his son in the gospel, Timothy, and he's expressing God's ultimate desire that this God desires that all men be saved and then not just to be saved, but to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Yes. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 5, the Bible begins to talk to us about light. The first mention of light in scripture is Genesis 1 and verse 3. And Elohim said, let there be light or light be. And the Bible says there was light. Now verse 5, the Bible says, and God called the light day. Very profound scripture. He gave the light a name and he called it day. And the darkness he called night. That means in the mind of God and in the economy of the spirit. Day is not just when it is 6 a.m. in the morning till 6 p.m. Day only happens when you have light. Listen, 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 listen. Listen, don't be too quick to just shout for nothing. Pay attention and understand. Listen, are we together? I know you are celebrating the word, but do it with understanding. The Bible says he called the light day. That means I can be chronologically speaking 
standing at a time that is 12 noon in the afternoon but spiritually i am still in the night because in the realm of the spirit it is not the chronological passage of time that alternates day or night as we know and have it in geography are we together this in many parts of africa now is night so once it's 6 p.m 7 p.m there about the sun departs and you have darkness that is our concept of day and night so day for us starts say from 6 a.m in the morning down till about 6 p.m but God is correcting that understanding. Geographically, you are right. But from the standpoint of spiritual intelligence, that you are only in your day when you access light. That means a man can be awake 10 p.m. and in the spirit it is day because you are standing from the abundance of light. Are we together? That God called the light day and the darkness he called night john chapter 1 and verse 5 john 1 5 uh, john the apostle this is his own version of the gospel his synoptic account and he says in verse 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not that means everybody who sustains light automatically has dominion over darkness. Hallelujah. I would always want to give this example. Imagine with me. Let me walk with your mind for a minute. Imagine a room that has been dark for 10 years. No bulb. No one has switched the light. 10 years. You have that in your mind? Imagine another room that has been dark for one year. No one has tried to put on the light. Imagine a room that has been dark for one week. Imagine the fourth room that has been dark for a whole day. And then imagine the fifth and final room that has been dark for a few hours. Question. The moment you put on the light for all the rooms, which of the rooms will be lightened first? That means the longevity of darkness does not count in the presence of light. The room that has been dark for years, months, weeks, days, Hours, perhaps minutes, will respond the same way at the instance of genuine light. <laughs> Hallelujah. The meaning of that is that longevity of darkness is only as powerful as the absence of light. In fact, science has not truly been able to define light. But scripture gave us a very profound definition of light. It says that which makes manifest is light. Whatever makes manifest is light. The assignment of light is to take away haziness and confusion, to bring to bear that you are able to see things the way they are. Hallelujah. I hope you know that the reason why you are able to see is not because you have two pairs of eyes. If I switch the light here, your eyes are still fine, but you will not see. It is the union of your eyes plus light that equals to sight. Hallelujah. So it is not just that you have a pair of eyes. It takes light in partnership with your eyes for you to see. We are discussing the subject of light. Empowered by light. Light in scripture symbolizes three things. Please write. Every time you see light in scripture, it symbolizes number one, knowledge. 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 Every time... The Bible talks about light, it talks about knowledge. Number two, light in scripture symbolizes manifestation. Manifestation. Number three, light in scripture is always related to glory. Every time you see light, you cannot define glory in its entirety and not add the light factor because the bible says even among the stars paul speaking to the church in corinth he says one different from another in glory hallelujah one of the ways from an earthly standpoint when jewelries are, have, have been smelted and they've been worked on properly they glitter am i right on that yes they glitter as proof of their quality and as proof of their worth so light in scripture is connected to these three things one knowledge two manifestations three glory but for the purpose of our discussion the emphasis tonight is on knowledge spiritual 
illumination hallelujah are we learning now the way god designed the kingdom please look up the way god designed the kingdom is that after you encounter christ the moment you encounter jesus christ in what you know to be the new birth experience and i hope you know that the believer's journey begins the necessary and sufficient condition for you to be a recipient of god's life is that you believe in the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus believing jesus as a prophet does not save even though that is true believing jesus as god does not save even though that is true there is an exact information about jesus you must believe to be saved demons believe jesus but they are not saved are we together so just believing jesus does not save there is an exact information you find that in romans chapter 10 from verse 9 and 10 that if thou shalt confess with your heart the lord jesus your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved verse 10 now says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so we only call someone a christian a child of god if you have encountered this initial experience it's important i don't just brush over this as we seek to discuss the subject of knowledge because spiritual illumination in the kingdom is for those who are in the kingdom in the first place so Nicodemus comes to Jesus and says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent a teacher come from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Then Jesus replies in verse 3 and says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Nicodemus is amazed. How can a man be born the second time? Will he enter into his mother's womb? And then verse 5, he says, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Then when we get to verse 16 of the same John, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his then only begotten Son, that whosoever, that blessing is for whosoever, believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then verse 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So it is very, very clear from scripture that the only way to be saved, there are not two, three, four, many methods. There is only one way. Jesus said very clearly, I am the way, not we are. I am the way. No pastor is the way. No church is the way. We only help to guide men to the way. I am the way. I am the truth, reality, and then I am life. Do we have that down? See, this is a prophetic conference, and it's important that our spiritual understanding be stabilized by methodically helping us understand as simple as this thing I've said is, you will be surprised how many believers, respectfully speaking, even preachers, cannot articulate the elementary rudiments of the faith if you cannot listen if you cannot articulate this you are not growing properly are we together now yeah when you send a child to nursery school they don't begin to teach the child physics although one day he will learn physics imagine how wicked you will perceive a teacher to be finding him teaching students in a nursery school further maths and physics and chemistry and helping them to you know titrate and do all kinds of things would you keep your child in that class but you intend the little boy can say i will be an engineer and i'll be a doctor you agree with him but you verify that he grows methodically so he starts by learning the rudiments. A is for apple, you say. B is for ball. And when he recites it to you, you are, listen, the goal is not to keep him limited like that. But that is the bedrock. That is the building block. So there are more, many believers who cannot defend the faith with understanding because our knowledge is random. We stumbled across anything spiritual and we just added it. And it, it, nobody, an architect builds a house with intelligence. You don't start your building with a zinc or a roof, although a roof is needed. Are we together? So the Bible says line upon line, 
precept upon precept here a little there a little if you do not understand the rudiments of the new birth of salvation it does not matter how deep you are you are only being thrown up to come down because Christ is that foundation are we together so when the believer by acknowledging the lordship of Christ now comes into the kingdom listen carefully the Bible now tells us that the Holy Spirit one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is to now guide you even though he plays that role at the initial point of salvation he now begins to guide you Jesus said I have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now John 16 he says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth is that in your Bible he will guide you into all truth hallelujah so he now the holy spirit in partnership with the word and in partnership with the teaching priest this is why you must thank god that you have a man of god who allows you to grow methodically and holistically the unbecoming of many believers is that sadly for many of them did not have the opportunity to be properly mentored under the ministry of a teaching priest jeremiah 3 15 and i will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding they will feed you light is a meal you can feed someone with it and that person the same way you feed someone with proteins carbohydrate and you call it balanced diet the believer needs to be fed with light and that is the assignment of the teaching priest so the teaching priest in partnership with scripture and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture are we together which is able to make you wise unto salvation and now brethren acts chapter 20 32 i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified so when you get saved the next step is the holy spirit in partnership with scripture the written word in partnership with the teaching priest takes it over from there and now you begin to learn the basic truths of the kingdom and there are seven found six foundational doctrines that if you are not taught your life is at a risk you find that in hebrews chapter 6 the bible calls them the foundational doctrines there are six of them we're not dealing with them this is just an introduction so that we will have an understanding listen you don't just stand and tell demons go and they go they verify your growth they verify what you are standing upon is the reason why many believers mock themselves we desire power we desire anointing we fall down and stand up but there is no stamina no strength no longevity of impact there is not much that can be done in and through our lives the reason is because there is bankruptcy of methodical growth Are we together please make sure you listen thank you so the teaching priest in partnership with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God now begins to guide that believer line upon line precept upon precept series after series teachings after teachings and before you know it you get to a point where a miracle begins to happen to your spiritual understanding your understanding is altered you now begin to understand the ways of the kingdom and with understanding comes transformation that is the basis for bible faith when you are now sufficiently transformed you now make way for empowerment empowerment is useless without transformation to attempt to empower an individual in terms of impartation without transformation is the same thing as carrying oil or water and pouring it in a basket there is no sense of retainership it will not stay are we together look at the ratio look at how jesus built the early disciples who would later become apostles the ratio of teaching to impartation was three and a half years to one day they desired power and he told them sit down and learn sit down master let's do this why couldn't we pray? 
sit down. When he was done, they were itching to go. He said, no, 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 no. Now you have knowledge, but knowledge alone is not important. It's not the, the ultimate. Tarry ye. Now you have knowledge. I've spent three and a half years teaching you. When the Holy Ghost came, nothing could stop them. Look at Peter's sermon. Peter did not just say, I was anointed. No, that's a good student. When they all gathered, he said, no, 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 no. We're not drunk as you suppose. This is only the early hour of the morning. But this is that. And he began his discourse from Joel to David. At the end of it, he said, let it be known to you, O Israel, that this same Jesus whom you have crucified has now been exalted as Lord and Christ. As a result, the Bible says they were caught to the heart. And they said, men and brethren, what should we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins and then you will receive this promise for the promise is unto you. These were anointed men, but they were doctrinally sound. The early church, the pattern for the building of the early church is found in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. The Bible says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, when there was trouble as far as serving tables, they wanted the apostles to leave the apostolic duty and come and manage welfare issues. They said, no, get men among yourselves, seven of them, full of wisdom and the Holy Ghost. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. I sense in my spirit that one of the things that God is doing is helping someone to see the value of light before anointing we are a generation that really loves anointing and that is important you will receive the anointing but the beauty of empowerment you see the oil will always assume the shape of the vessel carrying it that was a problem with the woman the wife of the sons of the prophet her vessel was small it was not the oil the prophet said no go and borrow vessels not a few and the oil started expanding to assume the size of the vessel and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped mm. hallelujah in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the prophet speaking by the spirit was communicating a lamentation from the spirit and he said my people this is a very profound scripture first two words my people even though they are my people, it says they are destroyed. Not because of the strength of Satan, not because of the economy, not because of the wickedness of the Antichrist system. They are destroyed, it says, for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. You only reject what is available. You only reject what was offered you. We reject knowledge through pride. We reject knowledge through an arrival mentality. Are we together? No wonder the Bible says we should receive with meekness the engrafted word. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee that thou be no priest unto me. The Bible says in Psalm 82, when you read from verse 5 to 7, it says, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 and jesus quoted this same scripture in the new testament i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes listen to me ladies and gentlemen in the kingdom our possibilities are defined first by the extent of light the spiritual illumination that we have submitted ourselves to from age 12 Jesus was not looking for impartation. He was in search of light. He was found at the temple discussing with the doctors of the law. Remember, this is the word incarnate. John 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. But when he was incarnated and he became flesh, he went to learn. Where do you think he learned it is written from? Matthew chapter 4. When Satan came to him, he did not say, I am God. He did not say, don't play with me. He didn't speak all kinds of cultural sentiments. He said, it is written. 
And Satan said, when it has to do with this, me to have studied, it is written. And all their discussions where it is written. It is dangerous to not know what is written. Because what is written is greater than what you saw. What is written is greater than what you heard. Listen, it is written can change what you saw. It is written can change what you heard. But thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. Listen, any believer that is not full of light is like a man who even though an adult is moving with no eyes would you want to follow such a person would you trust such a person and yet there are many sincere believers respectfully speaking some of them preachers the blind leading the blind longevity in the house of god does not translate automatically to dominion dominion is the resultant effect of your accessing light and when it has to do with the business of light there is false light the bible says that was the true light that lighted every man that means there are false lights they carry a semblance of power and liberty puffed up with knowledge rema but in the presence of real life situation they do not sustain the potency that light brings i'm challenging you first and foremost to know that the missing link the journey between this version of you where you are spiritually and the prophetic version you have seen in your dreams and your visions is first and foremost light Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Profound scripture. Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Amplified says, rise to a new light. You don't arise just because you are, you've been there for a long time. No. The man who in John 5 was at Bethesda, he was there for 38 years until the light of the world came to him. You would think longevity of his stay would automatically translate to his miracle. But he remained there in pain and shame, close to breakthrough. But nothing happened until Jesus showed up. Many believers today are victims of demons, curses, yokes elemental limitations many believers today desire to rise to the full prophetic destiny some of you right from infancy there have been prophecies over your life like jeremiah in chapter 1 from verse 5 to 12 the young boy he says whilst thou were in your mother's womb before thou camest forth i called you and ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations but from that time till now most of us have not done much for the kingdom the reason is because we continue to recycle our limited respectfully speaking spiritual understanding and the only thing growing in our life is just our age we are not growing in knowledge we are not being relevant in the kingdom this conference was designed to shake you up and challenge you are we together and you see when ignorance unites with pride it finally chains you at the same level let me take it again when ignorance unites with pride our world is full of people with so little spiritual understanding and yet their pride is as tall as the statue of nebuchadnezzar We must be ready to learn. We must be ready to sit down. Do not be embarrassed when it has to do with being in the school of the spirit. Don't say I've been in ministry for 10 years. Prove it by your result. The dexterity, the outworkings of the spirit, the construct of your spiritual understanding. Perhaps you are a pastor here and now as you are listening to me, the Holy Ghost through my words is telling you this is what you need to teach your congregation. How would you raise a weak people teaching them like this? 
how would you guide if you teach people the rudiments of salvation and then you begin to ascend from faith to prayer to fasting then you now get to other matters oh come on you will raise men in the similitude of david mighty men I submit to you that the reason why we largely have a weak church and a weak congregation is because we have a weak pulpit. Now, I'm, I'm saying this not, not from a standpoint of sarcasm and condemnation. There is too much excitement and ignorance and guessing and shadow boxing. No. God's people must be guided intelligently and methodically that one year in church should show in your life how many of you will keep paying the school fees of a child who after one year he returns back cannot spell cannot speak does not understand and then they give you a pta letter that the school fees has been doubled because of the economy wouldn't you want to see the principal you want to have a discussion with the man am i right on that Someone say light. light. One more time, say light. light. So the Bible says that my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. There are two reasons in scripture why Jesus cried. Theologically speaking, the Bible records that Jesus cried twice in his earth walk. Number one, he cried in John eleven thirty-five. 35. The Bible says Jesus wept. He cried at the grave of Lazarus. Am I right on that? And the people said, oh, how he loved him. Jesus wept. The second instance where he cried, I think that was Luke, Luke chapter 19, 41, 42. The Bible says he looked over Jerusalem and he saw the ignorance of the people and he cried, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if only you had known in this thy day the things that pertain unto your peace, but now they are hid from you. He was crying because he saw the ignorance of the people ignorance made the son of the living God cry hallelujah the Bible is full of many instances where believers are mandated to contend for knowledge for instance Ephesians chapter 6 Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus Ephesians 1 my apologies when you begin to read from verse 16 here's what he said Ephesians 1 16 I cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers are we still together verse 17 that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him 18 the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of your calling what is the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints 19 says and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believed according to the working of his mighty power so paul was praying for believers men and women already saved but he was praying that the eyes of their understanding be enlightened that they may know Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 same Paul same Ephesian church having their understanding darkened he says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart and now there are people in the body of Christ who are not totally in ignorance in fact I really really believe that any believer that is serious and has been under a teaching priest should have had some level of knowledge the challenge is that the light from your phone cannot light this entire auditorium although it is light the darkness in the world the darkness that wants to bedevil your destiny does not require a little light you need high level illumination first corinthians 8 2. so there are people who have light we know a few things here and there but the bible leaves us a strong word of caution first corinthians 8 2. let's read together ready one to read and if any man think that he knoweth anything he says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know 
you may have listened to my teachings where i give examples that in our grading system i believe is same with ghana we have f being the least grade am i right and a being the highest grade now f does not mean zero f means from zero to 39 so anything you score within that range is still considered f so in a class of 10 students where the highest scores 38 percent when you say who is the best they will bring the one with 38 percent but from a great system of f to a who passed hallelujah so before we begin to be puffed up with pride and say i'm the highest among my contemporaries we will need to take scripture and grade you 38 may be the highest of the 10 but what grade is that over 100 and yet you can have a class of 50 students and the least student is 72 and when you say who is the least performing student he will come up but from that great system he had a B the assignment of every man of God is to so file and build believers to a point that the least among us is as great as David <laughs> hallelujah do you believe this In Psalm 45 and verse 4, Psalm 45 and verse 4, the Bible says, Ride in thy majesty, ride prosperously because of truth. Your excelling, your dominion, your joy. Prosperity here has nothing to do with money. It just means to excel, to surpass ordinary standards. To ride prosperously like the king that you are because of truth hallelujah your health your longevity your finances your growth in life and ministry your excelling your dominion over the cosmos are all light dependent that means if you ignore light you have made a bad bargain with your destiny if you ignore light as a preacher you ignore light as a businessman are we together the Bible says the same came to his own, talking about the light, and some of them received him not, but to as many as received him. That means there are people who will reject light. And God will respect your choice, except that you will beg and limit yourself in life and destiny. Very quickly for the purpose of our discussion tonight, light I taught you, translate to knowledge so every time i talk about light within the context of this discussion let your mind think knowledge there are five dimensions of knowledge that every believer must know in fact there are six i'll start wherever we stop just a few minutes and then we'll end for tonight commit yourself by the way let me encourage you to not miss the remaining sessions no matter what sacrifice what price you will pay under God and as much as is within your power please pay that price so that you will capture everything that God has in store for you if we're together shout a loud amen. amen so there are five dimensions of knowledge not every knowledge is useful for the believer but there is an exact body of truth that is important if the believer must rise are you ready for it five dimensions of knowledge that you must contend for number one the first dimension of light you must crave for you must contend for is that you must know god and his son jesus christ that is the first dimension of light you must seek to know you must know god and you must know his son jesus christ john 17 3 this is life eternal that they may know thee john 17 3 this is life eternal that they may know thee the only true god and jesus whom thou hast sent daniel eleven thirty two, 32 the b part but the people that do know their god is that in your bible they shall be strong capacity and they shall do exploits 
the people that do know their God, the people that do know their God, the first dimension of light knowledge you must pursue is the knowledge of God and to know Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, your confidence in this kingdom is based on your encounter with God. If you have not met the God of the Bible in the burning bush, you cannot stand before Pharaoh. Pharaoh will ask you who sent you. And there are many of us who have been asked by the Pharaohs of life, who sent you? You want to be the one to rise up and end tears and end curses in your family? It's not just because you are a church goer. These principalities and elemental spirits have been there before you were born. They will ask you who sent you. Moses said, do not send me until you reveal yourself to me. And God said, I am that I am. When he stood before Pharaoh, he was not threatened by the pride of Pharaoh, nor the dexterity, the extent of the wizardry of Egypt. Many, many believers talk about God, but they do not know God. Reminds me of an experience in the early church where a few people came and they built a monument to an unknown God. They were worshipping a God they did not know. They were giving to a God they did not know. They were singing to a God that they did not know. It is time for you and I, ladies and gentlemen, to press for a higher and a deeper knowledge of God and a deeper knowledge of Jesus Christ. If you care, please make reference to my teaching, Knowing God. I have done a teaching there where I show you the four pathways to knowing God. There are four biblical pathways to knowing God. Number one is through scripture. Number two is by studying his names. Number three is by the man Jesus, the embodiment. The Bible says in Ephesians, uh, Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 and 3, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in time past by the prophets, had in this last day spoken to us through his son in whom he has had appointed to be heir of all things and so he begins to speak like that and then number four experience so we can know god the point is the first dimension of knowledge you must press for is the knowledge of god please write it down this is eternal life that they may know thee the one the only true god there are many things that call themselves god there are many spirits that call themselves god and so that you are not confused you must know the one true god and it's important to know it before your journey to exploit because you have no idea the challenges what fought your father your grandfather the territorial spirits that are across regions it takes the knowledge of God to stand tall and say like the apostle would say, I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. Are we still together? Number two, very quickly. The second dimension of light, knowledge. Those outside, are we following? Shout a loud hallelujah. Thank you. I need to know that you're with me. Number two. The second dimension of light and knowledge that every believer who desires to be empowered, you desire to be mightily used by God to do much for the kingdom. The second dimension of light that you need to have is that you must know yourself, who you are in light of who Christ is. As simple as this revelation is, if you do not know who you are, in light of who Christ is, you will live a defeated life already. You must know who God is and his son Jesus Christ. Number two, you must know who you are in Christ. Very powerful, very profound statement. Let me give you two scriptures. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 6. I like Paul. I've met him once in my vision, but I pray that when we get to heaven, I have the opportunity to discuss and I say, you this man. Very interesting man. Thank you for mentoring us. Paul was such a powerful man. I hope you know he brought a dimension to the kingdom that is not found in the gospels. Jesus said, I have many things to tell you, but he cannot bear them now. Those many things were the things Paul revealed. 
Without the epistles, you cannot understand the implication and the advantage of the gospel. Jesus never taught the advantage. No. It was Paul who helped us to understand. And that you find in Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 2. It was Paul who let us know that we've been seated with Christ. It was Paul who let us know the extent of our dominion. Far above principalities, powers, thrones. Is that true? It was Paul who arranged the organogram of the satanic kingdom. It was Paul who arranged the gift of the spirit and taught us how to administer it that all things be done decently and in order. So, Ephesians 2, 1. And you, now, Paul by the spirit is teaching us about us. It's not enough to know about God. You must know about you in light of who God is. And you have he quickened who were dead in your trespasses and sins. Wherein in time past ye walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the sons of disobedience. Three, the Bible says, among whom ye had your conversations in time past, and so on and so forth. Verse four, but God, hallelujah, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Five, reading to six, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. And by grace are ye saved and had raised us together and made us to sit together. Shout this word together. Yes. One more time, say together. Yes. As simple as this word is, it can redefine your spiritual reality together with Christ. Preaching together, healing together, doing business together. You can fail alone, but you and God cannot fail together. Listen, without God, I'm a failure already. You can fail alone, but not when he works together with you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Are we together? Had raised us up. Now, you can know yourself in the flesh. I am from Takoradi or I am from somewhere in Ghana. That is just, that is just, that is, that is anthropology, you see. But I'm talking about knowing yourself by the spirit that I have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation that I may be weak in the flesh but I've been exalted, elevated to a position where I am seated with Christ. That is a reality that does not depend on designers. That is a reality that does not depend on, on the physical things, all the paraphernalia that we have around that try to make us feel valuable, as important as it is. It's a living spiritual fact that when you are in Christ, the Bible says, number one, that a real translation happened from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. And it is up to you to know it and to believe. You need to know who you are in light of who Christ is. This is not just Pentecostal gibberish. Your confidence does not just depend on the knowledge of God, but the knowledge of yourself. Hallelujah. When you know who you are in Christ, there are things that will not scare you again. No. My friend, please stand. If I call you a baby, will you cry? Will you pray about it? What will you do? You will feel sorry for me and hopefully be sure that I'm fine. Because of, listen, you are so confident in your adulthood that my statement has no effect on you. The revelation that you are an adult has immuned you. Now, many believers chicken over everything. Someone will call you this today, call you that tomorrow simply because you are not standing strong upon that which the bible declares it says let god be true and all men liars when jesus came he was not in confusion about who he was there were things he told them he acknowledged he was the messiah he even said before your abraham your father abraham was i am he was not apologetic for that statement it was not pride it was the truth ladies and gentlemen please sit down thank you if you know who you are, you will know who you are not. Hallelujah. Yes. So you must take the time to learn who you are 
in light of who Christ is because our identity in the kingdom is derived from who Christ is the Bible calls him the firstborn among we the begotten that means we don't know who we are until he defines our identity because we are created in his image and in his likeness are we together according to ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 the bible says for we are his workmanship is that in your bible recreated in christ jesus unto good works so we were redesigned regined in christ we will have to look at the original to know who we are Jesus I know Paul I know so Satan does not just know God he knows men Jesus I know the Savior of the world Paul I know but we have checked in the spirit I don't know you you are moving around preaching around but you are not known and yet they were saying we adore you by Jesus whom Paul preaches Blessed, wonderfully and fearfully made, the beloved of God, the head and not the tail. This is what he calls me. You refuse to allow Satan call you any other thing. Situations and circumstances can call you all kinds of names. You are ugly, you come from a family that is the least, that is the devil's business with his ignorance. As far as you are concerned and as far as you're being recreated in Christ is concerned, you are greatness on your way to happen listen this is not motivation you have to believe this the bible says saviors shall come out of zion he's not talking about god he's talking about us revelations 5 and verse 10 and has been made unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on earth the bible calls you the light of the world the salt of the earth matthew 5 13 ye are the salt of the earth matthew um, 514 if the salt has you are the light of the world verse 15 he says neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel verse 16 let your light so shine he calls you the light he calls you ambassadors he calls you a blessing Genesis 12 2 and 3 in this shall all the families of the earth be blessed you can't meet me and go back the same it's not pride it's the truth the Bible says, I am a blessing because it was spoken to Abraham and his seed. Galatians 3.29 And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now listen, you don't believe because you have become. You believe to become. Did you hear what I said? Waiting for a physical manifestation before you agree is not how the economy of the kingdom works. He said, let the weak say. You say I am strong to be strong. You don't wait till you are strong, then you verify. Mm -mm. A lie is not just an untrue statement. A lie is anything God did not say. Anything God did not say is considered a lie. So if God calls you great, that statement becomes true immediately, regardless what is happening around you. Is someone learning? Let me give you one more and then we'll continue tomorrow. Number three. Hmm. See, listen, listen, listen. I just feel inspired to give you one more scripture on this point too. This knowing who you are. You see, your, the dexterity of your knowing yourself is revealed in your speaking there is a way you speak that shows clearly that the light of god has not come to you give us isaiah 8 20. don't forget this scripture for the rest of your life this just came to my spirit let's read together isaiah 8 20 ready one to read to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them. There is a way men who carry light speak. Because they understand that where the word of a king is, there is power. Do you believe this? 
let me give you number three what is the third dimension of knowledge and light remember what we are teaching empowered by light someone will leave this place tonight changed like you will cut there, there is a healthy confidence something will begin to happen to you as a man of god you will now begin to see the richness the depth of the things of god number three you must know your place in god's program and in destiny this is the third level of light you must contend for please write you must know your place in god's program and in destiny if you do not have this knowledge you will live a frustrated defeated life you must know your place ladies and gentlemen there is a place for everybody in god's program you will be angry you will be jealous you will be envious you will hate yourself and and vent that anger on others if you do not know and you cannot find your place in god's prophetic picture everyone in this auditorium or at least most of the people in front are seated please come my friend you two please come two of you please come no just stand where you are just walk around scatter yourselves all of them have their seats regardless the fact that they are scattered you will not be with respect to sitting you are not angry you are not envious you are aware of your seat it's still there show me your seat no 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 don't go just point it show me your own seat sir show me your own seat sir show me your own seat sir no confusion their confidence is based on the fact that regardless where they are they can point to their position now watch this my friend come you come you come how many of them are here four how many seats are there gently try to go and sit down all three of you all four try to sit down in those two seats look at the confusion that will happen somebody must be angry somebody must be jealous are you seeing the drama that is happening thank you You're good actors give them a good hand clap hallelujah listen to me the foundation for jealousy and envy and all these petty things that have plagued the body of christ is the bankruptcy of this light knowing that there is a space in destiny with your name connected and there are souls connected to that name there is a description my god jeremiah 1 verse 5 it says from when you were a baby whilst you were in your mother's womb before you came forth god is not scratching his head wondering what to do with you in ghana no you came as a conclusion of a divine discussion hallelujah the third dimension of light we are all gathered today celebrating god in takoradi because a man found his place are we together now you imagine you imagine that bishop and his wife at their age just came for a conference like this hoping to find his place count the number of people tied to his grace and count the number of years they would have been waiting because one man did not find his place only god knows how many prophets are in your loins still waiting how many apostles in your loins how many businessmen financiers how many heads of government you don't believe what i'm saying let me show you in genesis 17 and verse 6 read it as a prophecy that within every man i will make thee exceeding fruitful and i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee that means for every man you are seeing is a composite of many destinies connected to him refusing to find your prophetic place in life would be limiting many imagine if jesus did not come imagine if there were no apostle paul let me show you how many books of the bible will be absent because one man was absent imagine if matthew was not there mark was not there imagine if esther was not there who will teach us on favor imagine if ruth was not there do you know what you call the bible is simply men finding their place and fulfilling their assignment 
the exploits of their lives were canonized and archived and kept for us to learn are there books that will be written when your life is done so that people will know that somebody walked through Ghana that God brought a prophet indeed that God brought an apostle a kingdom financier a politician is someone learning so you must know God the first level of light you must know yourself in light of who Christ is number three you must know and find your place in destiny I'm wrapping up already let me give you a scripture Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 Hebrews 10 7 lo I come mm. in the volume of the book it is written of me not to roam around not to look for trouble not to just call myself a Ghanaian or an African or a Zimbabwean a Nigerian to do your will oh God in Luke chapter 4 the Bible says the scroll of Isaiah was given to Jesus and he found where it was written concerning him have you found where it was written concerning you because everybody's destiny has a parallel in Scripture when you stay with the Holy Spirit, you will suddenly find out. I feel tempted to add one more. Is that a good temptation? Number four. What is the fourth dimension of light that you must contend for if you want to be empowered by light? You must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom this will be the last for tonight and then the remaining two will take it up tomorrow you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom goodness 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 I can spend the whole night on this fourth point Job 38 33 knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth he was speaking to job do you know how heaven regulates itself and can you reproduce that dominion upon the earth listen to me dominion is not an impartation you may have heard me say it is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom Matthew chapter 10 and 13 now and verse 10 it has been given unto you 13 10 because it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom 13 10 Matthew 13 10 because it has been given to you did I get that right look for it for me please Matthew chapter 13 and verse what now 11 my apologies it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven please look at me the reason why you call a doctor a doctor the reason why you call an architect an architect is because there is a technical know-how as far as their skill is concerned am i right on that so when someone says i am a consultant say maybe a consultant gynecologist or a pediatrician you expect that there is a high level technical skill through learning and experience such that medical cases within their practice should not be an issue as much as possible is that true and the, the difference between a consultant and a medical student in medical college now is not just their age necessarily it is the abundance of light and knowledge backed up by years of pragmatic practice and experience that is what translated the once medical student to now a consultant this is true also in the kingdom most believers do not understand the principles of the kingdom again it might interest you to know that the bible is divided into three sections you always whenever you study the bible you are encountering three realities number one promises number two principles number three prophecies every time you open your bible you are encountering these three realities one promises god's commitment to us two 
principles, the modus operandi of the kingdom, how the kingdom functions. For instance, when you want to prosper in the kingdom, say financially, you don't shadow box and guess your way. The way people prosper in the world system is not the same. There are principles that can be adopted, but the kingdom has a certain, certain principles. For instance, in the kingdom, you must know that God is the owner of all things. We don't own things in this kingdom. We are only stewards. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. You don't need that knowledge in the secular, but in the kingdom system, you need to understand this. That everything belongs to God and we are only stewards. Then you now begin to apply the laws of diligence, relationships, value, productivity, giving, and all these spiritual laws together. You see that? You need to know the ways of God. Why do you pray? Do you know why? Why do you fast? Do you know why? Why do you study? Why do you have to speak the word of God? Why do you come to church? Why do you have to love even the unlovable? when you understand the ways of god you practice the truths and the principles of the kingdom not as a religious ritual but now with understanding i know you fast my question is why do you know the relevance the role that fasting plays in the overall growth and maturity and stability of the believer why do you give I sat here and I watched many of you giving so my heart was so touched by your love for Jesus and your giving. But why do you give? Why do you sing? How does someone who is surrounded by challenges, ladies and gentlemen, will lock himself or herself in a room, write all your challenges and start singing and dancing around it? What formula is that? Where did you learn that from? What role does it play? The things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. Many believers are in ignorance as to the ways of God. So if someone comes to tell you, I've been attacked by demon spirits, as a matured Christian, or so you say, recommend the way out for him. Let me hear what you will tell him. Usually we will say, let's pray. And will say anything and just say in Jesus name and we know that that person's solution has not come we just ask him to go so that we can find peace but we know in truth that that person is not going to be free because that does not look like the formula when someone comes and tells you I've been rejected nobody loves me I'm sincere but it looks like good things friends and good things go away as a believer who understands the way of God what is your recommendation to such a person again let's pray what are you going to say you see that there is a lot of ignorance in the body of Christ we have a lot of gaps in our spiritual understanding and the Lord has put a conference like this to bring us close. Please don't miss tomorrow. I'm going to be sharing with you certain mysteries of the kingdom and help by the Spirit to connect some of these dots that with precision you can know you are a blessing. With the, with the intelligence of a consultant, you can see a believer and literally diagnose the problem in a moment and then you can help people with exactitude and precision. You can know that this family is in bondage because of this and this is the way and happy are you if you are a pastor imagine what happens to your church this Sunday that you go back with this upgraded knowledge and you look at your dear people and say ladies and gentlemen the one you used to know is not the one preaching now sit down and let me show you with confidence the way of the kingdom and you return by next week with testimonies because the truth that you know has opened men to vistas of new possibilities you believe this this is how much God loves you to bring you this truth every time God has compassion upon men he does not help them by bringing sentiments he sends his word understanding is the key to dominion empowered by light that was the true light that lighted every man 
from the abundance of this knowledge now impartation can come and when you receive that impartation you will not make a fool of yourself it will last there is longevity to your impact because the impartation is resting upon knowledge let me recap and then pray i gave you four dimensions of light that represent the knowledge you must intentionally pursue if you desire to be empowered by light number one the knowledge of god and of his son jesus christ number two the knowledge of yourself in light of who christ is number three remember give me number three yes hallelujah your place your prophetic position and your place in destiny someone needs to return back home this night and say lord i'm tired of escorting men roaming around rigma rolling any road that looks like destiny lord what did you call me to do what is my place where is in in your prophetic program for ghana and africa where do i stand and he will answer because the bible says call unto me and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not and then number four the last for tonight you must have an understanding of the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom Listen to me. Longevity has a mystery that controls it. Favor has a mystery that controls it. Speed has a mystery that controls it. Influence has a mystery that controls it. Are we together now? Walking in the gifts of the Spirit has a mystery that controls it. Being loved and regarded by all and sundry, honor, all of these dimensions in the kingdom the bible simply calls them exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature it says haven't escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust exceeding great and precious promises shrouded in mysteries my final talk with you tonight is which of them do you not know do you know the key that controls speed do you know the key that controls longevity in this wicked demonic world or are you waiting until you die do you know the mysteries that control authentic lasting kingdom wealth not manipulation and prank and telling lies and living a fake life being blessed with the dignity of kingdom integrity do you know the mystery that controls final and total liberty from curses yokes can i tell you the truth is that everyone at some point or the other is connected to something that has to do with bloodline it is our understanding of what christ has done and then our knowing how to appropriate it knowing what christ has done does not bring you liberty it is knowing how to appropriate it with intelligence are we together yes you can buy a new gadget, a fridge for instance, and never be able to use it. It never cools anything, but it is new, no denial. It can cool, no denial. And yet you will be, you will be thirsty, you can buy an air conditioner and never be able to set it up. Yet it is new, yet it is true. If we say all those who have AC stand up, you will stand up. But all those who are enjoying the blessings of ACs, you can't stand up. This is how many believers are. Your salvation is a fact, but the experience is not yet true. This is why God brought us here. Can we stop for tonight? Rise up on your feet. We're not done yet. I know that I've stretched you a bit, but give me two minutes and let's pray together. The prayer is part of the meeting. Two minutes and let's pray. One is a sincere cry. Lord, I'm tired of this level spiritually. 
I'm ready to stretch to a higher level in the spirit. Someone pray. Let tonight's teaching provoke you. Whether you are a pastor, you are a prophet, you are an apostle, a co-laborer. One of the things that this teaching tonight has done is to shake you and challenge you. The days of nominal Christianity, shouting and jumping over nothing is, is, is decently coming to an end. God is raising a people of knowledge, power, stature, maturity, dexterity and intelligence. Lift your voice and pray. Father, it's time to encounter you genuinely. Encounter you genuinely. Ah, the generations connected to me. I can't fail my world. I can't fail my generation in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand to contend for light. That was the true light that lighted every man. One minute, pray. My dear people outside, make sure you are praying. Light, light in the name of Jesus. Light as a man of God. Light as a businessman. Light as a leader. As an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teaching priest. Lord, I'm tired of ignorance that has pegged me at the same level. Let's dive into the deep waters of the spirit. Can you raise a cry for one minute? Ah, let my Christian experience be rich. Please pray. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. For someone here, what is happening tonight is the dream God has been showing you. That this level you are in spiritually, you can't take the nations that way. Your mantle, the mantle of your destiny has been looking for you. But not the weak you, not the ignorant you, not the prayerless you. Oh Deborah, Esther, Ruth, it is true you are destined for glory. But until you contend for knowledge and for grace, and for power by illumination the light of his word i came tonight to challenge a preacher i came tonight to provoke you unto godliness as a fellow servant i came to challenge someone it's time for low level knowledge high level illumination is what god is calling us into Preachers, blazing light, blazing revelation. your retreat starts tonight ah your retreat starts tonight you will go back home and sleep will not come you will wake up and hold on to the horns of the altar 
It's time for the gates of my destiny to be open. It's time for the gates of my destiny. Nominal Christianity, goodbye. Shallow Christianity, goodbye. It's time to do business in deep waters. Deep waters in the spirit. Deep waters ascending in the spirit for high level illumination. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Just help that lady under the anointing. Let me just speak over you. Tomorrow, please, I do not want you to miss tomorrow because our impartation starts tomorrow and then we'll finish it up in the night. I want to show you some things by the Spirit of the living God. I truly believe with all my heart. I know that God sent me to everybody, but let me beseech servants of the living God, men and women of God, those who labor in word and doctrine, as much as God grants grace, please do not miss these sessions. There is what we need to hear. We came to strengthen ourselves, not to outshine ourselves, to strengthen ourselves. But there is what you need. I want to reveal to you God's prophetic blueprint for the season. You need to know what God is doing. He said, right, for these words are faithful and true. I will speak over your life tonight. Our time is fast stretched. Father, I'm praying for everybody, but particularly for someone here whose hunger for you has gotten to its limit and they need to encounter you. Father, the grace for encounters. Right now, I stretch my hands. May the grace that brings men that river of encounter let that grace rest on you now. Let it rest on you now. Let that grace rest on you now. By reason of this grace, his angel will wake you up in the night and begin to show you things yes. that you do not know. Show you things that you have never seen. He will begin to describe for you God's prophetic agenda he will open up the vista scripture so that you will see in a way you have not seen before yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. for some of you as you go to sleep tonight may you have dreams that open up the blueprint of your destiny hallelujah do you believe what you are receiving Hear me, there are some of you, there are certain relationships you will respectfully wave goodbye from this night because the kind of hunger that has come upon you, you, you mean business with God and with destiny. Hallelujah. I'm told tomorrow we're here about 8.30 or 9, whatever, even if it is in the morning you come, come, don't just sit down and be gisting around. While you are waiting, be praying in the spirit. I'm enlarging my capacity. While you are praying, see the destinies connected to you. Saying thank you for being diligent. Hallelujah. 9 a.m. and then 5 a.m. in the evening. I will instruct you by morning on what to do in the evening. But I can assure you that you have not experienced a conference like this before. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. For those of you in front, God bless you. You can return to your seat. I want to make an altar call. And I want you to listen. I want to make an altar call. There is a gentleman here. The prophetic is on you. This is what I'm seeing. I'm not ministering already, but I just want to obey the Lord. The prophetic is on you. Carry that gentleman and bring him for me. The power of God will come on him now. Oh, 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 oh,
But there are two ladies. I'm hearing a deliverer. Please, I want you to bring two of them for me. The power of God will come on two of them now. Add them to this. Shele, Sala, Parus, Kali, Barindesh, Efrasa, Sies, Habalako, Shabrandaget. There is one person outside. I know it's a distance, but I just saw fire rest on one person outside. Bring the person for me. people out it is not for a show in the name of Jesus that deliverer mantle I release it upon you now I release it upon you now I come by the rod of a higher priesthood I release it upon you now ah you will walk in dimensions you have not seen by the spirit of the living God you will walk in levels in the spirit you have not seen before in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus and for the gentlemen, I begin to fan that prophetic flame. Ah, the eyes that see and the ears that hear. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the seeing eye and the hearing ear belongs to the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please do not miss tomorrow. There are some of you who need to call some people that you know maybe not everybody but whilst you are here the Holy Ghost is telling you this brother needs to be here this sister it may even be your loved one this is beyond just a meeting and a crowd this is a kairos it's called a prophetic gathering in the name of Jesus the Lord brought you out here and every grace that should rest on you I release it now to the glory of the name of the Lord. To the glory of the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now I want to make an altar call. When I began my teaching I told you. That the beginning of the believer's journey does not start with coming to church. Does not even start with encountering a pastor, prophet or apostle. No. No. The foundation, the commencement of the believer's journey. Once they are fine, they can be back to their seats. Those under the anointing, you can just leave them. There is a reason why. Now, hear me, please. The business of playing games with Jesus must come to an end in this end time, you see. You cannot continue to shadow box and dilly dal. No. It says, if Baal be God, serve him. If God be God, serve him. In every gathering like this, we have a crowd of people in the auditorium scattered across many outside and thousands others following online by way of television and even by way of a rebroadcast. In a meeting like this, the Lord adds daily as many as should be saved. There has to be someone in this place tonight who is saying, Apostle, give me an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. Perhaps you have been around church. Perhaps you have a Christian name. Perhaps you come from a Christian family. None of these in themselves equal salvation. You need an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. Or perhaps there's someone here who is saying, I remember I made that decision, but right now I cannot truly say that I'm walking with God in truth. My life has gone haywire and I need a restoration. Now, let me give you an instruction as you come. For the sake of those who are in front so you don't march on them, please be mindful of them. I'm going to count one to five. The moment the stage is filled up here, you will stand wherever you are, maybe the aisles. Those outside, you need not come in. You can just move to your projector screen or anywhere where there's an official there to make it easy. But I want to count one to five. We need to take this serious. I'm not calling everybody 
but I'm calling someone who is sincere and saying I will not lie to myself I need to make it right with Jesus and when I begin to come don't wait for someone to be the first to come before you come be mindful again repeat of those who are in front so you don't injure them just smuggle your way through any space you can find in front I begin my counting now one come Ghana, is this how you celebrate salvation? Two. Where would I be if you let me go? Where would I be? Come. If you let me go. Where would I be? Come to Jesus. It is never too late to make it right with Jesus. Win that war of destiny. Your children will say thank you. Those connected to you will say thank you. Don't sit back saying they know me or they can see me. No! Come and mean it serious with Jesus. Mean business with him tonight. Apostle, I want to come but I'm not yet sure. Come. Come. You can be sure once and for all. Hallelujah. I salute all of you inside and those outside. And for someone who is following in your home, your office, following by way of television, as I lead these precious people to make that prayer, that call to salvation, make sure that you make it. You're not reciting a poem. Let it be from the depth of your heart. I congratulate all of you for the boldness to come and stand before Jesus. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Young and old, you're coming here. And thank you for that, that boldness. Let me request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. And say this as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I declare that I love you with all my heart. I declare that you are my savior, you are my Lord, and you are my king. I declare that from today, the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God, I have the life of God. I go from glory to glory and grace to grace. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. Thank you because only you are able to do this. You have brought them. Lord, keep them. Based on the authority of scripture, I declare their sins forgiven. And I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. And in the name of Jesus, I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, recipients of his life. From today, you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' matchless name, I pray. Amen and amen. Now, please look at me, ladies and gentlemen. I know that there are a number of you. I will plead with you. I understand there are counselors. Can you wave your hands so they will see you now? All of you who have come, please let me request that you just move to my right, which will be your left. A few officials will just have a word with you very briefly, and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you